G. Rakem. I'm the secretary of the Pre-Cancel Stamp Society and uh, past president of the Pre-Cancel Stamp Society. And I've taught a four-day pre-cancel course at the APS Summer Seminar. And these are a few of the slides out of that presentation for you. Uh, a little bit of history. The uh, first pre-cancel was actually on the uh, 1847 issue, which is uh, quite old. Uh, it was used at the uh, Nagatuck Railroad on the railroad. The conductor on the train had stamps available for people. And to save him time, he would pre-cancel them all. And then if people needed them, they would He'd cut them out, stick them on their envelopes, and they were all done. If you, sorry, wrong button. There you go. This is a close-up of it, and if you look, you can see the little lines here, which is one of the diagonals on the next stamp, and none of the extra little lines are on the envelope. So it's a pretty cancer. Here's some other, there's the uh, Gastonbury uh, Connecticut G and the Glen Allen Star. They're uh, pretty much classics that people have seen and collected over the years. The star comes in different orientations and different colors on different stands. Uh, general usage pre cancel started really in 1887, or that old. The, uh, this Milwaukee here was first mentioned in the, uh, in the stamp newspaper in, in Meekles in uh, 1891. So that's the first time we see a reference to it, to them being used. They, uh, they would have it city and state, no bars, and going up or down, sometimes diagonal, just a city, not a state. And then this is more the traditional, you know, the two bars with the city and the state on them. Here's some other early ones that don't exactly meet your standard uh, definition. There's an Eaton, Colorado. There's a Waterbury, Connecticut W and a Cod Wing. There's a Fort Wayne tombstone, they call it, because it looks like a tombstone. Uh, that one's a little light. It's in Indianapolis, Indiana. It says USA across the middle. That's the only pre-cancel that has USA on it. Uh, that's a Red Oak, Iowa. There's a New Salem. That's actually a pre-cancel, even though it looks like it could be a, a postmark. They would also date them. This is a 1902 from Northampton, Massachusetts. Uh, there's another one, and that one there was actually used by a coffin company. And that's a coffin in the middle of, of the pre cancer. And then there's a Lansing Spider, they call it. That's actually where all the railroads meet in Lansing, Michigan. A few more, there's a Jackson. This is a, uh, you can see it a little bit here. It says Hanover, New Hampshire. There's an arrow, and there's Lips. So that's actually for darkness. So the arrow is the dark, and there's the mouth. <laughs> and that one was done in a small size for definitives, and then a larger size that fit the parcel post. Uh, that one's a Montcalm, New Jersey. Again, a circle. It does have the bars. Calo, one line. Calo with multiple lines. Here's, uh, call that the Cincinnati football, maybe. There's another Cincinnati. Again, it was done in to fit definitives and to fit the parcel clothes. That one's a uh, little bit light. And in Richmond, Virginia, with a nice floor de lis in the middle of it. And here's some more earlies. There's a Chattanooga, Tennessee, and they had a Highland Park station, so they took those two out, plugged in the Highland Park station to make that pre-cancel. 
did the same for St. Elmo's Station. Then they went with the lines and they put a date on it. So that's 802, so that's August of 1902. Took the dates off of it. And there's another St. Elmo, different style, a little wider between the bars, heavier bars, and then one that fit the parcel post. Here's more of the dates. A lot of them from Chicago and Binghamton. And these were all done around 1901 and 1902. And then they changed the regulations and said you didn't have to put the month and the year on all of them. Sometimes the pre cancels are what they call silent pre cancels. There's no city, no state, just lines. And you see a lot of those on the postage dues. There is a catalog of them that shows those, but you know, if you get one vertical line, it's very difficult to tell which city, because a lot of cities use one vertical line. But if you find them on a cover, so this is a St. Louis one, because that's where the due stamp is put on. And then these were done really for the convenience of the postmaster. They pre-canceled all the postage due sheets. When they had them, all they had to do was lick them and stick them, and didn't have to go find the cancel or the cancel the stamp. Yeah, and these other pre cancels these were all the picks at the post office. You right. get a letter there, that one mail it to go blow. Uh, no, a lot of times, no, the user. You could purchase them. Yeah, the user would do them. They would do them, and then they would bring them, their bag down. You know, here's all of my, my stuff, and they'd spot check it or not, depending. And then into the mail they go. They would not cancel them, not have to count them or anything. All right, so yeah. you could conceivably reuse them. You could. But you had to have a permit to use them. Oh, okay. Right. And so if you get one in the mail, you can't reuse it. Got it. You'd have to get all the way back to the company that it came from, which seemed unlikely to a okay. post office. But that would happen. So they did put out some real regulations in 1903, and they really started in 1913 where they defined the font size, the spacing of the lines, the punctuation. You know, you had to have a city, you had to have a stage, you had to have two lines. That's where you got rid of a lot of those first ones that I showed you that were quite interesting but didn't meet this criteria. I had to put some parcel posts in because it's the centenary of the parcel post this year. They started in 1913. And again, these were, you know, for convenience. They do them all up, get them all pre-canceled, use them on the on the packages, on the letters, and not have to worry about canceling everything. This was all for time saving and convenience. We have what are called city type coils. They're on, of course, on the coil stamps. There's some St. Louis. There's a Shermac. There's a millimeter type one, millimeter type four. Sometimes they would dub, get them doubled. For the pre cancel Stamp Society, we've developed a style chart. And on that chart, we've got numbers for each pre cancel type. And they're illustrated. So the city types are there, the electroplates, rubber hand stamps, and so on. Uh, there's kind of what it looks like. So there's the city types in the 100s. Some more of those. So they're all grouped together in families. So if you can find the right family, you can find the right style. Here's some of them here. Sometimes they went vertical. If they were on the vertical, Carl stamps, either the up or the down, could be as prevalent at one as the other, because it really doesn't matter. Inverts on these are, are fairly uncommon. But on these, it's whichever way they loaded the coil, and they were off, ready to print them. These are here called ladder-type coils, because it looks like a little ladder. There's the rungs of the ladder. And again, they could go up, they could go down. 
usually on these, they would be oriented the same way, but on the verticals like that, it's hit or miss. Sometimes they do doubles. There's a double here. Usually if it was a double, it was because the first pass through was very light. So then they put them in again to get a, get a decent cancel on it after they got the inking separated. Electroplates, they're typically in get 100 stamps at a time. Big plate, flat plate. They press printed, so they put them in the press and do them a sheet at a time. Usually they would do them with the upright orientation. The inverts are less common on those. Airmail stamps did get pre-canceled. They did get used. Uh, these are Kansas City, Missouri ones, and they were actually used by the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City. They used the airmail stamps. We've got covers with those on them. It shows that that was the user, that's who used them. So they're, they're, not, they're not favors, they're, they're legitimate, they were really used by the, by the Fed. Uh, sometimes you can end up with a problem on a plate. That's supposed to say Springfield. The S is gone, the S broke off. That's up in the first position. Sometimes they weren't paying attention and they get it in there wrong and get it diagonal. Well, if you looked at the whole sheet diagonal and you get down to one of the corners, you'd have a couple of stamps with no pre-cancel on them. So they straighten the sheet out, put it in, and then do it right. Uh, have what we call double line electrodes. These are a real popular collecting specialty. They have a little, little double lines. So they're they're nicely, nicely printed, pretty looking stamps because they're electroplates, so they were printed stamps. You do find some of those that are double. You do find some that are inverted and diagonals. Then later, we get into the rubber hand stamps. They're not as pretty because it's a hand stamp. Depends on how well they inked them, how well they press that image in. They would get distorted because they were rubber. They clean the rubber devices with gasoline. Sometimes other chemicals that have marked the rubber so they kind of deteriorated as time went on with them. Uh, you know, you can see it's the beginning of the city is not lined up because whoever was doing them didn't get them, you know, quite as good as they could. Then there's little hand electrodes, and they look a little, a little nicer. Uh, they're smaller devices. They're either pins or maybe 25. Uh, this line here is not a regular pre-cancel line. It's the top of the device. So when they were canceling them and rocking the device, they rocked it a little too far and the edge made an extra line on there. Since these slot of them were curved on a wooden uh, plate, or when I wouldn't play, wooden piece of wood was curved and mounted on there, it come loose. So sometimes they would nail the plate to the wood, and if the nail heads came up a little bit, you'd see the nail heads would actually show up on the brick heads. And later, they have vinyl hand stamps because the rubber deteriorated. They replaced them with vinyl. So they're on newer stamps. You can see even here, there's a uh, zip code of the post office. Another zip code. There's the first three digits of the zip code. Integrals are pre cancels with 
initials and dates on them. And it was all part of the device. That's why it's called an integral. These were started in July of 1938. The post office thought maybe people were reusing them. So they said, if you've got six cents or more in postage, you've got to put the month and the year and your initials. So then, it's very hard to reuse them. Once you, you could only use them 10 days into the next month, and then they weren't, weren't valid anymore. So this MW is Montgomery Ward. The MBH is National Bella S. SRC is Sears Roebuck Company. KDC is Cat's Drug Company. So lots of different, very large companies or would use these, have the integrals, have their initials, have their date, have the date on them. Uh, this one is a PDPN, which is actually the printed, dated, printed newsletter. So it actually was a uh, stamp book. And they did, did their own for their members. There's another one there. That one actually is a uh, new new graph. So very small run on that. There were other mimeographs done. Did the parcel post with the mimeograph? Usually the mimeographs were in much smaller offices because you'd sit there at your typewriter, type up the stencil, put it on your mimeograph machine, and that mimeo is only good for a few, few passes, a few hundred passes, maybe. So you're not going to make a lot of them off a of mimeograph machine. But they didn't need many. It wasn't worth having a whole device made up. But you can see some interesting errors in some of these because you know, if you ever type that out on a, on a typewriter, on a stencil, there's no correcting on a stencil. You get the wrong letter, you got the wrong letter. You can back up and overtype it, but then you got both letters there. So you see those on the mimeographs. Bureau crew cancels which a lot of people have bureaus because there's lots and lots of them. They started with experimental ones in 1917 to see how this was going to work. And they really started in 1923. And they went all the way up to 1978. And 78 is when we went to the national types with just the two lines, no city, no state. And then we got the special service pre started first class, bulk rates, all of those guys started in 1980. And then the Bureau also did plane card revenues. And remember I talked about that style chart, the low numbers were assigned to the Bureau stamps. And then the 100 start with the ones done at the local post offices. So there's some of the first Bureaus. They only did three cities. They did New Orleans, Augusta, Maine, and Springfield. And they picked those three because they could have the Bureau print them cheaper than they could get them locally. So they said, it'd be cost effective, we'll do it. There are more than just the one cent values of them. But there's only 21 total that they did in the experiments. And two of the ones they did were postage dues. So those are the only two postage dues that were done by the Bureau of Arabian Printing. After the experimental period, they didn't do any more of those two students. So there's the first regular one for New York in 1923. There are a lot of the Bureau stamps are very cheap, 15 cents and up. You know, probably 90% of them fall into the 15, 20, 25 cent category. There are more valuable ones. This is a 596. This is a coral waste stamp. Uh, there are only 15 of these stamps known. Seven of them are not pre canceled, eight of them are pre canceled. Because it's not just us pre canceled collectors that want it, people want it to go into their U.S. stamp collection, and there's only 15 total available. Uh, the price is a little higher than usual. I think their last one sold for, I think, $180,000. Yeah. 
this is the finest known out of the 15. It's really a pretty stamp, really nice silver. You can get, this is just a, another typical bureau, but the buffalo is hard to come by without a post cancel on it. So post cancel is five dollars. Without the post cancel, it's five hundred. Makes a difference. Because typically pre cancel collectors want the ones without post cancel. Yeah. Post cancel messes up with your pre cancel. You can't see it as well. So as the bureaus went along, they had a little wider spacing. Then later, they went down to a little narrower spacing. So that's just a couple of typical stands. Here's a one from Memphis, 30 cent value. And this one is dated because it got into the period where they had to put the initials for Sears Roebuck and the dated one. So the dated ones are, are $50, but the undated ones are $5 because almost everything was dated. And here's where the nationals start in, just the lines, no city, no state. There's a little difference in the spacing on these two, so it's two different types. Here's some of the special service, carrier routes are, here's all the first class. And then, sorry, there's some more special service stamps. There's 80 some odd of the uh, service inscribed stamps that count as Bureau of Precancels. Even though some were done by the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, and you typically their quality control is very good, and they don't have problems, that says California Ventura instead of Ventura California. So, that's a 15 cent stamp. That's a $150 stamp. There was a collector in Ventura who went into the post office. The bureaus came to the post office. He bought 10 sheets, got home, looked at them, went back, bought a whole pad, took those home, went back, told the postmaster, you got a problem on those. They destroyed the rest of them. So he had his, and nobody else did. And it was only a pad. So that, that's it, there's only, only the 200 copies because it shows up twice on the sheet. This one's Springfield, this one's SSP. Oops. SP, it's SPP, I am mean. So that's another, uh, I think that's a $40 stamp is compared to the 15 or 20 cent. There's Athel Mass, oh, Mass. Again, $30 stamp versus a cheap one. There's Ohio, sort of, O-I-H-O. They spelled it right. They just put it in upside down. <laughs> so it shows up on a whole bunch of values. And there's five spots in a row they did that on the sheet. There they are right there. O-I-H-O, those five on that spot on the sheet. Uh, they did it on the half cent, the one cent, the one and a half, two, three, four, because it was the same pre-cancel mat, and they canceled six different values of the Liberty Series. Their best guesses by, at the time it was the Bureau Issue Associates, which is now the new SSS, St. Louis Stamp Society. That's their best guess of how many copies exist. And then there's the current price. There's another one. So instead of Milwaukee, it's Milwaukee. It was done on the one and a half and on the eight cents. And I think that one's $130, that one's for your 50. Because they corrected it as that after they saw it. This is a Minneapolis and it's doubled. 
So you can't see it real good there, but if you see there's a top bar on the E, there's the other top bar on the E. There's two middle bars and two lower bars. I do not have a price for that one. There's only two of them known. And it has not changed hands for quite a while. So you can find another one of those. I'd be interested in finding that. Here's Rockford, Illinois, and Fort Worth, Texas. So what they did was on the Huck Caldo Press, it would have four panes, and they mixed and matched. So they'd have a Rockford on one pane and a Fort Worth on another because they didn't need a, a full run of Fort Worth that they ordered. It was not going to be that long of a run. So they ordered, you know, a half a million of those, and they ordered a half a million Rockfords. Well, they just set it up with both plates on there and did a run of a million and then divided them up afterwards. Well, it was off. They hadn't adjusted the, synchronized the mat to the, the paper. And so this is off of one. This is the bottom of the plate up there. This should be the top of that plate there. And they were just off of it. So that's a, that's a freak. Interesting. There's a St. Louis, that's in perfect between. So that's Scott Catalog listed. That was a missing period. For the varieties that you can find. So I said they also did the playing cards. They did two styles of them. The first set that they did was for 10 cents. So that was the tax on the playing cards. Then the tax rate looked like it was going to change quite a bit, so they changed the stamps, and then they say one pack. And then it doesn't matter what the rate is, they just get charged the going rate. And then these initials are the playing card companies that made the stamps. So each one had their own set, own stamp that they would use. They put them on the packs, send them out, pay the tax. We also have farm pre cancels, not just US, Canadians. We've got city ones, and this is a money, that's a money order office number. And if you look in the Canadian catalog, it'll tell you what each number is and which town that goes with. So this is actually a Hamilton, Ontario. Belgium has their pre cancels, everybody's got a few of those. France has got theirs. And then, of course, since it was France, they, Algeria also had pre cancels, and Tunisia. And it's the same, same plate used on all of them. And Monaco, they did. Hungarian pre cancels kind of getting off the beaten path. Luxembourg has theirs. Netherlands has theirs. And there's the, the city. Sometimes, some of them have a date in the middle, have a year date. And it's on a roller that they rolled across and did them. Uh, some people refer to these as a lifesavers, because they look like a, a lifesaver. And that's it. Any questions about anything? 